everyone, it's Don once again. This is video number 126. I'm standing out here at the end of Corbin Trail. Why am I out here? Well, I got a surprise for you. Something new has come up in the plans, and I'm going to show you what it is today. Also in this video, I'm going to take a drive down Central Parkway. Last time I flew it, this time I drove it. I got on a motorcycle, strapped the GoPro to it, and away I went. Got a good view. I'm going to show you what's along the road. It'll be interesting to see. That's towards the end of the video. I've got some other stuff to show you in the video. I hope you enjoy it. So let's get going. All right, so this is me sitting here at the end of Corbin Trail. I'll back up and we'll get a nice view of Monarch Grove. Corbin Trail runs south until it gets to Eastport, where it then turns to the east and ultimately meets up with Bexley Trail just above the Olympia Recreation Center. The work going on here that crosses the roadbed appears to be for drainage piping that's got to be put in place. You can see the big stack of it in the corner. As we back up a little bit farther, you'll start to see the potable water and the reclaimed water lines laying down the middle of McNeil Drive. In the upper right corner of the screen, you'll see some construction going on. That's the San Tropez Recreation Center being built, or at least the site work has started. As we take a quick fly around this site, on this small map in the corner, I'm going to bring out some details. First up, we have two tennis courts and a half a dozen pickleball courts. Going out to this retention pond is a boardwalk that ends at a 320 square foot floating dock and a 300 square foot pavilion. Here we can see the starter shack in the upper left corner and the path going off to the Laurel Oaks Executive Golf Course first hole. At each end of the parking area there's a lollipop shaped path which appears to be the starting and ending points for the Live Oak Pitch and Putt. Next we have the San Tropez Recreation Center and Pool. The rec center is about 11,000 square feet, typical of what we see for most neighborhoods recreation centers. Next to it is a couple of shuffleboard courts and some cornhole pitches and a pavilion. Next up is a couple of bocce courts and some restrooms. All in all, San Tropez is typical in what we see in most village recreation areas now, as well as the combining of other activities, in this case golf, with the traditional rec center. Here's another quick look at the south end of Monarch Grove. This is the Franklin Recreation Center. It's expected to open sometime this month. The interior decorating is moving along quickly. We'll come up here and we'll take a quick look in the window. Looking inside, we can see that the wallpaper has a watermelon theme. I'm pretty sure that theme is going to be carried throughout the facility. We'll know more when the rec center actually opens. Hopefully the decorations won't go overboard like they have in a few of the other recreation centers. Outside, we see that the pool is complete. They've got the furniture out. It looks like it's all ready to go. Again, as I understand it, this rec center will open up sometime before the end of the month. Out front, we can see the other day, they were working on the sign for the village of Newell. The sign for the Franklin Recreation Center is already completed. This is the neighborhood recreation area for the village of Dabney. And as you can see, the shelf for the pool is done. This recreation area is larger than what we typically saw north of 44, and that's been consistent pretty much throughout the areas south of 44. The neighborhood recreation areas are larger, they have more open space, more green space, making them a little more friendly than typically what we saw north of 44 with just a swimming pool and the mailboxes. The drawings show this neighborhood recreation area as having four pickleball courts and two tennis courts. Well, that wraps up our look at the three recreation areas that are currently under instruction. There's more happening, though, here in the villages. We'll get to that in just a minute. First, a word from Magic Stairs. Let's face it, we're not as young as we once were. Climbing those old-fashioned attic stairs to get the Christmas decorations down or to stow those family treasures is just too dangerous. Magic Stairs is the safer alternative. Real steps with safety rails at a safer angle and safety rails in the attic provide the safest attic access available. Having troubles getting things to and from the attic? The Magic Attic Lift can be there to help. Designed by Villages resident Ron Burner, every Magic Stairs and Magic Attic Lift is custom built in their Ocala, Florida factory and installed by their technicians. Why take chances? For less than the 
cost of one emergency room visit, you can have Magic Stairs installed in your home. Magic Stairs, the safer, more convenient alternative. <music> Here's another then and now segment. This time, it's the village of Richmond. I know, we looked at Richmond a little bit before, but that was a big gap. This is only about a year's gap, and you can see what a difference just one year makes. Now, they didn't even start selling houses in Richmond until last summer. So, this is before the houses went up, and how it looks now just a year later. You know what? The blue courts in the back are platform tennis, and there's somebody actually playing there. First time I've ever noticed it. And, of course, the pickleball courts are always busy. All the homes here in Richmond are now sold. In the background, you can see the VIP garages. They're quickly being completed. Hopefully, in another month or two, they'll be opening up. Richmond was much anticipated and sold very quickly because of its close proximity to Brownwood. The only thing remaining now for Richmond is the area on the other side of Megason Road, just north of where the Buena Vista Extension comes in. No idea when that's going to start, hopefully soon, but right now, just a big pile of dirt there. Looking for expert real estate mortgage advice? Visit AskBobGersh.com, the go-to mortgage and finance podcast, hosted by local industry veteran Bob Gersh. Whether you are a first-time buyer or a seasoned homeowner, Bob Gersh offers expert advice and practical tips to help you achieve your real estate mortgage goals. So tune in today and take control of your life and your future. Go to AskBobGersh.com. Tucked back in the back here is Maxwell Villas. Over half of these home sites have a very nice view of the woodlands area or water. Speaking of water, look at the amount of water in the pond just beyond the Maxwell Villas, where it was a year ago and where it is now. We really can't get out of this dry spell soon enough. I'll probably regret saying that just as soon as the rains hit again. Things are getting just a little bit out of sync here. That's because the flight on the right was automated, the flight on the left was free flying. Based on some feedback I received from you all, I did some changes to the then and now layout. Instead of being diagonal, they're now side by side, and I clustered the altimeter and speed gauge and compass along with the map so that you were only having to look at two different places instead of three. Let me know what you think. Interestingly, even though we've been in a big dry spell, the wetlands area currently are much lusher and greener than the wetlands were just a year ago. But, as you'll see here in just a second, the water levels in Lake Okahumpka are much lower this year than they were just a year ago. I'll head back now down to where we started from, down by the gate coming into Richmond. We'll get another look at the recreation area. It truly is amazing how much they've accomplished in just a year. I hope you've enjoyed the then and now segment. I'll try and have another one for you in the next video. Next up, we have a new Arby's coming to town, right here in Wildwood. It'll be at the corner of Powell Road and 466A. With all the things coming in this area, this is going to be a very busy intersection for quite a while to come. This is what the location looks like from the ground. It's right next to the Dollar Tree. It's going to be an Arby's plus two other stores that are being built in the same building. This is what it looks like from the air. We're right across the street from where CVS and Home Depot are going in. That's the Dollar Tree store in the lower right. And actually behind me will be a new hotel that's going to be built. And from what I've seen of the plans, it looks like it's going to be quite a large one. Here's the site plan for Arby's. Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating Systems give you the control to adjust the temperature room by room. So it's always comfortable in the living room, bedroom, rooms for cat people, rooms for dog people, rooms without people, old rooms, and smart ones. Mitsubishi Electric. Make yourself comfortable. All right, let's move a little bit north to where Hobby Lobby is being built. The store, the shell, is pretty much complete. 
All the exterior walls are up. If you look carefully, you'll see guys walking on the roof, closing up the roof and making sure it's all watertight. This is located behind Red Lobster on 466 and just a little bit to the west and behind Fresh Market. I haven't heard an official opening date yet for Hobby Lobby, but it's a big box store and they usually build these pretty quick. So probably another three or four months, most definitely it'll be open before Christmas. I was out having a little bit of fun when I was shooting this, so I decided I'd go take a look inside. No, I didn't fly inside, but uh, I got pretty close. Here's a look inside. As you can see, they're framing the walls. Now this is about uh, a week old, so they've made a lot more progress inside since this was shot. Here's a couple of the guys working on the roof. They spotted me, I spotted them. This is Darlin's Sweet Shop. It's located in Sawgrass Grove. It's a small business run by Estelle Krasinski. Hope I got that right. But most importantly, it has the holy grail of chocolate ice cream here in the villages, Zanzibar chocolate. So I'm reaching out to my fellow chocoholics. Come and join me for an ice cream social at 1 p.m. on Tuesday, May 16th. The first 25 scoops of chocolate ice cream are on me. Even if you don't like chocolate ice cream, I'll still buy you one if you're one of the first 25. So why am I doing this? I want to do this to say thank you for all my viewers, to give back a little bit, to help another small business owner, and most importantly, I love chocolate. So come on down, enjoy a chocolate, we can talk, you can ask questions, I'll answer questions about any topic I know, and we'll have a good time. Let's move back south again, and we're going to take another look at Eastport. This is heading east over Central Lake here at Eastport. As you can see, the liner is going in throughout the lake and they're covering it over with more fill. There's about two to three feet of fill on top of this rubber liner. During my recent diggings for information, I came across some changes to the island that's coming up. They've changed the left side of the island, as you see in the drawing in the right corner. Also, there's a dog park here, I found out. And then there's this star on the ground. It looks like some sort of entertainment area that they're building. Between the two sets of columns you see on the ground is where the main stage for entertainment is scheduled to be. I'm gonna fly down what will eventually be the main street this is Bar Boulevard, and it runs all the way down to the back side of the high school by the football stadium and beyond. You can see the site work for the village's health care facility on the right. As I cross Central Parkway and swing around, you'll see a berm on the top of the screen. This is for the driving range to keep the balls from coming in and hitting the cars in the parking lot. To the right of Bar Boulevard will be a bank, and to its right will be another golf cart store. This pond on the corner has been designated for radio control boat use. As I round the corner and start going up Bexley Trail, you can see just how big Eastport is. It's probably going to be bigger than any of the other downtown areas built to date because of the lake, the inclusion of a regional recreation center, the ball fields, all of this together makes one large facility that's going to be an important part of the development's future. The area in the middle of the screen that's kind of green is the ball fields. I'm going to round the corner here. Now we're going to be going up Corbin Trail. This is the same Corbin Trail that we looked at when we looked at the San Tropez Recreation Center at the beginning of the video. Between the Farragut ball fields, the Olympia Recreation Center, the driving range, and the executive course that are all attached to Eastport, this will be a very integrated part of the community with the downtown shopping area, the entertainment, and all the other things going on here in Eastport. 
So I've been trying to work out the bugs on this flight path, and I think I've got it to where I want it now. So in the future, as things develop here in Eastport, you'll see the same flight path that I take each time. So you can become familiar with the way things are laid out. I'll also update the map as things go along, and more information becomes available. Here's another look at the island, and then the camera will pan around, and you'll get a look at where the hotel is going to be built. Hi, I'm Jeff Monash with Village Air Filters. Are you tired of wasting money on throwaway paper air filters? I can save you money with my lifetime permanent washable air filters. Just buy it once and never buy another air filter again. Rinse it out and then just slide it right back in. My filters are custom made in the US and they have a lifetime warranty. Give me a call at 352-388-1230 or visit my website at villageairfilters.com. We'll move a little bit to the north now to where Marsh Bend Trail is being widened to four lanes going down to McNeil Drive and we'll look at where the new 7-Eleven is being built in Magnolia Plaza. This is the south end of the village of McClure. As we rotate around we'll see the 20 acres where this new apartment complex is being built. I don't know a whole lot about this property. I shot some footage for the realtor a little over a year ago when they were trying to sell the property and now this is happening. We'll just keep following it and see what, what becomes of it. Okay, next up we're going to fly over to the village of Well Point, which is just south of Monarch Grove. And when we look at it, we can see the utilities going in that will feed all the lots. It won't be too much longer until the lot utilities are in and they'll start laying out the local streets. If you look carefully, you can see the path here for McNeil Drive. Well Point will be on the left, and the village of Oak Hollow will be on the right. There's also a traffic circle scheduled to go here. The village is building the traffic circle. The county is building the road from the previous traffic circle to this traffic circle. As we rotate to the left, you'll see the work going on on County Road 501. The rest of 501 will be widened from McNeil Drive down to where the construction work is happening to attach this to Central Parkway. The county is working on some grants to cover this cost. This is the 7-Eleven at Magnolia Plaza. It's looking pretty good. It's almost done. They haven't stocked the shelves yet. Don't know what the holdup is on that. At the pumps, these nozzles that are red are actually for recreational fuel. It's just mislabeled on the pump for right now. Here's another view of the 7-Eleven. Again, this is just a gas station and a convenience store, nothing special. What makes it noteworthy though is its location. This is going to be the first gas station in this section of the villages and it's very much needed. To me, the layout for the drive going into the car wash is a little bit confusing, but I'm sure we'll all figure it out. This is obviously another needed thing down here in this section of the villages, another car wash. As I was flying around, I decided eh, maybe it's time to take a little peek inside the car wash and see what it looks like. Then that nagging question hit, do I go in? Oh, why not? Let's just go in just a little bit. Ah, that's far enough. I'll back on out. Okay, let's just try that one more time. Knowing my luck, I figured the water and brushes would kick in by now, so I backed on out. Actually, I never even went into the building. I never even went under roof with the drone. That was a zoom lens that made it look like I went in. 
Maybe next time I'll fly all the way through. Looking for that perfect Murphy bed for your bonus room? Look no further. We offer three things. Best quality, best service, best warranty in the industry, bar none. Give us a call, set up an appointment, 612-598-3303, murphyoffice.com. Now let's slide on down to Middleton and take a look at the schools being built and some of the commercial properties under construction. This is a view of the academic buildings. This is on the west side of the school. You can see the covered walkway areas where the students will be dropped off. This appears to be a courtyard where the students will be allowed to gather. I'll fly up and take a look at the inner courtyard. There's a couple of guys working on the roof here. The building at the top of the screen is the gymnasium. We'll rotate around just a little bit and we'll get a better view of the courtyard. The building at the top of the screen now is the cafeteria. The academic buildings are on the right. I'll back up and we'll get a nice view of the front of the school. The schools are scheduled to open on August 10th. Many people question the need for these schools. This is going to double the capacity of the schools. And this is about being able to bring quality workers to the villages area so that they'll work here. And this is one of the biggest benefits that they get a high quality school for their kids. Here you're seeing three of the commercial buildings that are under construction for the Middleton downtown area. This is not a downtown area like Brownwood or Lake Sumter Landing or even Eastport. This is a, a different kind of environment that's being built to service the residents of this area. But of course, this will also be open to the residents of the villages. The building with the red roof is the Early Learning Center or Pre-K School. This is the elementary and middle school. As I understand it, the decision has been made to convert the old high school up on County Road 466 to a middle school and then expand the elementary school to give the system even more capacity. levels in these retention ponds came up a little bit, but they've already started to go back down now that it's stopped raining and we're back into our dry spell again. I'll fly back around the back side of the school again, and we'll take a look at the athletic fields that are being built. These are absolutely gorgeous. In the opening sequence of this video, you saw a quick flyover I did of the football field. All the grass you're seeing here on the fields is actually artificial turf. I don't know what's going in these two white spots outside the end zones. I'm sure by the next time I fly though, it'll all probably be filled in. We'll fly around a little bit more and we'll take a look at the Olympic sized pool that they're building. Things are really coming down to the wire with the school. They've got three more months and it's all got to be done and ready for opening. That wraps up this look at Middleton. We'll do another quick look at the courtyard in the school, and we'll move on to the next area. Let's slip a little bit to the southeast, and we'll take a look at the Shallow Creek Championship Course and Country Club. Here's the parking lot for the Shallow Creek Country Club. Looking at the early drawings, it appears that it's going to have a restaurant as well as a pro shop. But again, those are early drawings. Everything is subject to change at this point. We'll see what happens as time goes on. As we fly over the Shallow Creek Golf Course, you can see that they've already started laying in some of the grass between the traps and the greens. A lot of work is going on. This summer there's going to be a lot of greening going on in this course. It'll be interesting to watch it change. As I fly over the residential area, this is the village of Moultrie Creek. And if you look carefully, you can see the outline of the roadbeds that are being laid in. And you can also see some of the utilities coming out that have been put in place for the homes. 
Moultrie Creek is the age-restricted community here in the villages that's the farthest south and closest to Middleton. There's nothing else south of Monarch Grove or of the Turnpike that is as far along as Moultrie Creek. So I would expect construction of homes to start on this area very, very soon. That's the new high school at the top of the screen. It was actually looking west just a second ago. The compass on the upper right hand corner is a new design I'm working on and it has a few little problems I'm still trying to work out. But let me know what you think of this design. The round thing at the top of the screen, that's a one and a half million gallon water storage tank and that's a well facility that it's next to. And now we're coming back to the parking lot. I'll do a more detailed look at this golf course as things mature. Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating Systems give you the control to adjust the temperature room by room. So it's always comfortable in the living room, bedroom, rooms with ducts, rooms without ducts, rooms with all ducts, old rooms, and smart ones. Mitsubishi Electric, make yourself comfortable. Let's head on over now to the village of Lake Denham, where there's a lot of action happening over there right now in construction. Here we're looking north at the north end of Lake Denham. In the upper left hand corner is the Mickey Lee and Jubilee golf courses. As we spin around we see that there's a flurry of activity here. They're going crazy in this area right now. At the top of the screen, on the other side of the turnpike, is where the hospital is supposed to be built. Now if you were at the evening with the developer event this past week, Mark Morris talked a lot about health care. But he danced around and never touched on the status of the hospital. Kind of makes you wonder what's going on, doesn't it? Where you see the road change color, this is where they finished paving Megaston Road all the way down to 470, and they've also striped it all the way. When exactly this section of the road is officially going to open is anybody's guess, but I will tell you I've seen a lot of people using it already. Building in the south end of Lake Denham has already started, and it won't be too much longer until we probably see construction starting in Dabney. And after Dabney, everything's going to shift to the other side of the turnpike. It looks like Moultrie Creek will be starting first, and then Well Point, the area just south of Monarch Grove, will be the area after that. This is the south end of Magison Road, where it meets County Road 470. And we'll zoom in and we'll take a quick look at the gatehouse that's being built. A lot of people are thinking this is going to be a shortcut to the turnpike. If you live north of 44, it's not. I did a test run going up through 301 and coming down this way. 301 is still the shorter time to get to the same point on the turnpike. And after McNeil Drive is complete all the way down to the Southern Parkway, that will be even faster than Megason because it's a higher speed and four lanes all the way. Hello everybody, my name is Joey Faulkner, owner and operator of 24 Hour Cart Club here in the Villages, a towing service provided strictly for golf carts, whether it be flat tire, run out of fuel, uh, any kind of emergency breakdown, uh, feel free to call us. You can sign up online at 24hourcartclub.com. You can sign up over the phone, area code 352-661-0562. Use promotion code WINGNUT and that'll give you three months free on a year membership. Now we're at our last segment for this video. I'm going to take a drive down Central Parkway and I'm going to do it on the motorcycle. This is the most fun I've had in a while filming video and I really enjoyed doing it this way. On the left is the village of Merritt Field and on the right is the village of Farmstead. Probably named after this farmstead sitting right here on the right. You're watching this in real time. This is what it looks like when I'm on the motorcycle. For those of you that ride a motorcycle, no, the camera doesn't lean when I go through the corners. The GoPro straightened that out. For those of you that don't ride, you'll be happy that it straightens it out because you'd probably get sick watching it. After the traffic light, the road's going to curve to the right and we're going to pick up Bexley Trail. Bexley Trail goes all the way up to the bridge and all the way to Sawgrass Grove. Here we're making our turn. And you'll see Bexley Trail coming up where it goes straight ahead and we merge into it. On our left now is the village of Water's Edge and on the right is still the village of Farmstead. Yes, it was very windy during this ride. That's why you see the haze from all the dirt being kicked up by the wind. 
Coming up is a traffic circle. The first exit will be Central Parkway heading east, and it goes all the way down into the Wellness Village and ultimately turns a little bit south and meets up with County Road 470. The next exit is Bexley Trail heading north to Sawgrass Grove. On this corner of Central Parkway and Bexley Trail is the retention pond designated for RC boat racing in Eastport. Eastport is now on our right and Water's Edge is on our left. Just past the turn coming up on our right is where a golf cart store is scheduled to be built. And just past it on the right is where a bank is going in. The road coming up is Bar Boulevard to the right is Eastport and to the left it goes down through the village of Moultrie Creek all the way to the south side of the high school. The new village's health care facility will be built on the right and just beyond it between the berm and the tree line will be the driving range. After the tree line on the right, they're putting in a golf course maintenance facility, and beyond that is the new executive course that's being built that's associated with Eastport, and just beyond that to the north is the village of Lakeview. The construction area coming up is where we cross over the old county road 470. This whole detour was necessary so they could widen the southern end of County Road 501 or Marsh Bend Trail to four lanes and connect it to the traffic circle that's coming up. Coming up is the traffic circle where Marsh Bend Trail will come in on the right. It'll also go off to the left and eventually connect up to McNeil Drive and beyond that. Here we go through the roundabout. That's Marsh Bend Trail, and we get back on Central Parkway. Now on our left is the village of Shady Brook, and on our right is the Gibson Wastewater Treatment Facility and Electrical Substation. This was actually quite an enjoyable ride. The old County Road 470 was very straight and very boring. This has a few turns in it and a nice view. At this point on the left side of the road is no longer residential. I'm still looking to figure out what it is. And on the right now, this opens back up to residential. This will be part of Middleton. This is the family area. Early drawings showed the area on the left as being some sort of recreational area. Maybe a rec center. I'm not 100% sure yet. As I said, I'm still digging into this one. The traffic circle coming up is for Landstone Boulevard. It's named after the Landstone development that was established sometime in the early 2000s, but never came about because of the housing market turndown that happened in 2008. If you take the Landstone exit to the south, you'll end up at the football field, and just beyond that, at the Shallow Creek Golf Course. As we continue to the east on Central Parkway, along the left side of the road is now the commercial district for the Middleton area. You can see several of the buildings under construction. We saw these earlier when we did the flyover of Middleton. At the traffic light coming up, if you turn left, that will take you straight into the main entrance to the high school. And just beyond it on the left is the early learning center. Again on the right is still more residential area for Middleton. Also in this area is scheduled to be several sets of apartments, as well as what looks to be either townhouses or duplexes. The big building on the left is the elementary and middle school. I've received several calls and emails about senior citizens living in Middleton. If you're going to live there, you're not going to get the amenities that you have in the over 55 section of the villages. So that brings to question, why even move? It's a pretty community, but if you're looking for a retirement home, it's not going to be that. It's going to be just like where you're probably living now. So maybe not the best choice for a 55 or older person. If you go to the left in this traffic circle, it takes you to the section of Middleton that's currently up for sale. It's worth taking a look at. The homes are gorgeous, just as you'd expect here in the villages, with lots of different floor plans that are different than what you see in the age-restricted portion of the community. Many of them are two stories. Thank you. 
We're coming up on the next traffic circle, and this is where Central Parkway rejoins its original path with County Road 470. We'll go all the way around and turn back and head back to where we started from on County Road 470 with a little bit of a twist. This is County Road 470, and as we continue around, the next exit takes you to the Village's Home Warranty Department. As we continue back down Central Parkway, we're going to accelerate to, let's call it, fun speed. This is what Central Parkway would look like at three times the speed you see on the speedometer up there. On a motorcycle, this would be a blast. I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but let me tell you, the temptation is there. It's a beautiful road, and with no traffic, there's an itch. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please support my sponsors. The next video will be coming out in about two weeks, and we'll have some new things to show you. I'm Don Wiley. Have a good day, and enjoy each day as it comes. Life is short, but let's make it sweet.